Hi everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm building the Estes Mini Honest John. This is what they call a semi-scale rocket. Um, it's intended to look like a scale model, but the, the measurements and proportions may not be exactly to scale. Nevertheless, this is a nice looking rocket and should be able to put this together in a few hours to a day depending on the treatment you want to use on the fins. So if we go ahead and open up the package here and check to see what we have. Okay, so first of all we've got the fin material and mine has come loose in the package here. So normally this would be all one sheet, um, but I can make sure that we've got everything here. So. Even though they came apart, the fins are still there. Um, this one they call F, this is a standoff for the launch lug. All right, then we have this nice nose cone here that has a lot of detail built into it. We have our body tube. And then in the little small parts bag here, we've got pretty much everything else. Right, so we've got a shock cord, one of two motor uh, centering rings, a little bit of plastic modeling clay. This will be used to add weight to the nose cone to keep it stable. Do not omit this part. This has to be installed or the uh, model will not fly correctly. Parachute, motor mount tube, launch lug. Motor mount spacer, this is not part of the rocket, but will be used to put the um, engine mount in the, or engine block in correctly. Okay, another centering ring, and then back here, we have the engine block, okay, or thrust ring, same thing. And then we've got some water slide decals here. Um, as well as the NAR safety code, which comes in all the kits. All right, so it looks like we have everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this back in so it's out of the way. And then we'll start in on the build. As I record this build, I'm actually building two kits at once. And this is so I can show you some customization options that require a few extra parts that don't come with the kit, uh, but can make the kit a little bit better, in my opinion. And... Uh, Mainly, this will be in putting in a better motor retainer than what comes with this, and also exchanging the rubber shock cord for a Kevlar one. And I will show that the two ways to do these as we progress through this. So, um, from your point of view, it looks like I'm building one kit with options in it. I'm actually building two of them side by side here. So, first of all, let's go ahead and sand the fins. Okay, and as I mentioned, this one, uh, the fins had come apart in transit. That's fine. Um, here's the one from the other kit, where everything's still intact. The first thing we want to do is simply sand down the surface. So to sand this, I'm going to use some 150 grit sandpaper. Um, this is a sanding tee. You can also just use a sanding block. Or if you don't have that, um, you can simply do it with your hand. Uh, any sandpaper between 100 and 220 grit is fine for this step. And so I'm simply going to sand the surface and knock down any high points. Remember to always sand with the grain. Now, if your parts came like this, where they're partially or fully apart, that's fine. You just need to sand each one individually. Okay. 
Okay, and remember this is a part here, this little piece. It's a standoff for the launch lug. Okay, now if you still have some of them stuck in a sheet like this, go ahead and do it like that. Though be careful, they may try and come out on you. Yeah, that one's trying to come off, so I may end up doing it by itself. We'll see here. All right, once you've got everything sanded, then use your hobby knife to remove any of the little wood tabs that remain here and just gently separate it from the rest of the balsa. Okay, and then the remaining balsa here can be discarded or put in your balsa scrap box if you have one. Okay, um, same would go if, if you still have the intact sheet, you're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to do this one on camera just for the sake of brevity. Now once you have all of the fins cut out, you can stack these together and then sand the edges so that they're all even. And for this, simply put down a piece of sandpaper. Um, you can use whatever you use to do the initial sanding. And here I'm just going to drag the edges across a few times. Okay, and that's going to take off that soot and it'll also remove uh, any of the remaining wood from the cutouts there. And then just turn it to each set of edges and do the same thing. Okay, so most of the soot there from the laser cutting is gone. And then here um, you have one of three options actually uh, to treat the fins here. So if you want to get the, the most scale-like uh, appearance to them, then what you'll do is taper the front leading edge up here and then also taper the trailing edge so that in cross-section this will look very much like an airfoil. Okay, that's going to be the most realistic. It's also the weakest. So anytime you have those really nice, pretty knife edge tapers, that's also a place that's really easy to chip or break a fin. So um, you could also, if you want, not shape the edges at all and just leave them squared off. That generally gives you the strongest fins, uh, but it also gives you the worst aerodynamics, so that may not go as high. A compromise is what they show here for the sport scale profile and that's where we simply round over the fins here on the leading edge only and leave the um, other edges square. Um, you can also round the tip edge and the trailing edge. Um, I'm just going to round the forward edge here uh, because that's really where most of your uh, improved aerodynamics come in is on that leading edge. And to do that, um, simply take your sandpaper again, and here use a little bit finer sandpaper, so 150 to 220. And I'm just going to start by taking the edge off the corners of the leading edge there. And then as I continue, I just bring this back and forth and turn it as I go. And so this is going to round off that edge. Um, and this is a small balsa fin, so this is going to go pretty quickly. And you want to be careful you don't do it too much. All right, so now you can see in profile here, um, that's rounded, although it's a little off-center. I need to fix that. Okay, same if we look at it from the root edge. OK, 
Okay, so according to this, this part needs to round over a bit more. Right, now we're just kind of even things out. And then once you've got the general shape, go ahead and hit this with a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper um, just to smooth it out a bit more. If you're going to leave the fins untreated. Okay, so at this point, we've sanded the face, we've shaped the edge, and if you want, you can just go ahead and start gluing the fins on. Um, the alternative is to apply either some sanding sealer to this, or you could um, do a paper laminate of the fins. Now, in either of those cases, those treatments add weight to the back end of the rocket. They're going to add weight to the fins, especially papering them. Okay, or if you use a really heavy sanding sealer. Um, the reason that this model has the modeling clay in it is because it needs the extra weight in the nose to keep it stable. If we have too much weight in the rear, then it'll become unstable again. So you want to make sure that um, with whatever fin treatment you use, always check the stability of this rocket and make sure that whatever you did in the back is not going to um, outweigh, pun intended, the weight that you put in the front to keep it stable. So I'm going to build um, one of my kits here with just the bare wood like this. I'm just going to give it a little bit more sanding um, and then I'm also going to show you a way to paper the fins using self-stick address labels. I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding the rest of my fins off camera. Here I have two sets of fins. Um, these are the ones that I previously shaped and sanded here um, along with the launch lug standoff. And so these are, I'm not going to do anything else to these fins, and I'll mount these directly to the rocket when the time comes here. Uh, this is another set of fins and standoff. And these ones I've just sanded the surface and the edges, but I've not shaped them yet. And for these, I'm going to paper these fins, which will give us a smooth surface as well as additional strength. Now, there are several methods of papering. Um, one is to glue the paper onto the fins. Uh, one I've learned of more recently, though, is to use self-adhesive paper. And with fins this small, I can use uh, 3 by one inch address labels. So what I'm going to do here is simply peel this off and put it sticky side up. All right, and then I'm going to take a fin uh, make sure you don't have any sanding dust left on it. Okay, and I'm going to place that over here so I get a little bit of overlap of paper around it. And in this particular case, I can put two fins on one label. Now, some people do like to shape the airfoils in the fins before they do this part. Um, with fins this small, I think it's actually going to be easier to do it afterwards. Okay, so th those are on there, and now I'm going to take another label and place that over to sandwich everything in between there. All right, and I'm just going to rub on this really firmly to get everything to attach as much as possible, and you can turn this over. Make sure you don't have anything on your work surface that might press up into it. Okay, and now I'm going to repeat that for the other two fins. So the same idea here. Uh, we're just going to take one label, put a fin on that, leaving a little bit of overlap all the way around, and the other one here. Okay. Now if you want to do this with bigger fins, um, you can get, simply get bigger labels. Uh, you can get full sheet labels where the whole sheet is one label. Um, you can get sheets with half sheet labels. Those work well for things like uh, you know, big fin rockets like the uh, Citation Patriot and some of those.
And if you really want to make sure that sticky stuff gets on there really well, um, you can put these under a, a heavy weight, like a couple of large books, overnight, and then do the following uh, stuff here. I'm just going ahead and cut these out, as I think, given their size, um, they really don't need a whole lot of long-term pressure on them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is very gently, carefully cut in between them to begin with. And you want to make sure you've got a pretty sharp blade when you're doing this part. Right there. Okay, I'm going to do it for my other ones. These ones are a lot closer together. So I'm going to feel my way through that first. Because we don't want to cut the fins. Which I just barely did. That's such a, a hairline though. That's fine. Okay. So now I've got the edges there. And now I'm going to carefully trim down this material right to just at the edge. Okay, you can leave like a millimeter above it if you want. You can also just cut it flush. You just don't want to cut below it at this point. Don't cut into the fin. I'm really trying to do right there. Right. See that the, the sticky isn't adhering as well. Um, and that's actually fairly common along the edges. Occasionally some of my viewers chastise me if I'm cutting toward myself. So notice I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, and you can go ahead and do the other fins like this. But once you've got it to this point, okay, um, try and clean off any little fuzzies and such, though it's not critical that you get all of it. Because now I'm going to take some super glue here. And I'm just going to run a small amount right along the edge here. And that's going to soak into the edges as well as the paper. And when it dries, it will harden it and prevent the paper from lifting off. Now, don't do this to the root edge here. Okay, because it's just going to get glued on. And at that point, um, the glue we use to put it onto the rocket will also keep the paper from moving. Okay. So just do like that, um, and I'm going to do the other fins. Now again, you don't have to do this for the kit. If you just want to do this really quickly, just do the shaping that I did before. This is my papered fin set, and the super glue has dried. And so first I'm just going to look for any paper that's still sticking up a lot. And we can trim that off here. So there's a little bit there. And trim that down a little bit more and then what we'll do is sand these down so those look good so first start with the root edge here um, this shouldn't have any super glue on it but some may have leaked over the edge so I'm just going to take some 150 grit sandpaper here and just smooth that edge and you may notice there's a, a little bit of, of fraying here and it kind of flattens out along the edge that's actually good because this is going to give us an even greater surface area for gluing to the rocket. Okay, for the other edges we'll start I'm in the same way here and just sand them down so that the paper is even with the balsa edge. Okay, and we're not going to worry about this edge stuff sticking up here quite yet. So once you've got those up, now you can take your sandpaper and just very gently sand away that edge material that was sticking up there. And for this, um, I'm going to go up to some 220. The 150 is just a little bit too rough yet. Okay. 
You don't need very much sanding, just enough to knock down that edge again. Now here, as I do this, I see there's still a little bit of super glue and paper sticking up. So I'm going to come back to my 150 once more. Finish knocking that down. Okay, and I'll go ahead and finish doing my edges. Okay, and now at this point, um, if you're going to round the edges here, you can do that. Um, as I mentioned, some people like to do the, the shaping of the fin first, and that works fine too. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my 150 here and round off my leading edge. If you're going to do the full taper that the uh, the full scale version shows, I would definitely do that before papering. Now this does take a little bit longer than doing this with just the wood fins because the super glue is making the wood harder there so it takes longer to shape. Um, on the, the flip side of that though, it makes your fins stronger. Finish this off with the 220, and this will help blend the paper in better. All right, and then we simply need to do the same thing with the other three fins. I'm going to do that off camera. So here I have the fins all sanded and papered. Okay, you may want to just go through and check. Make sure you don't have any other rough spots here. Got just a little bit there. I'm gonna just knock that off. Okay, and again, I'm intentionally leaving this rough area on the root edge. You don't have to, uh, but it does give you a little bit more gluing surface, and so potentially making the fin joint stronger. Our next step is to assemble the motor mount, and for this, you'll need the motor mount tube, the spacer tube these two centering rings and then the thrust ring or engine block. Uh, this model does use 13 millimeter mini engines which is why it's got such a small engine mount here. And the first thing we need to do is take the uh, spacer and mark 8 millimeters on it. So here I'm going to take my ruler and measure 8 millimeters. Once I have my spacer marked, now I'm going to mark one end of the motor mount tube here as aft. And this is just to make sure that I don't get it turned around accidentally. Okay, what we're going to do then is the thrust ring will be glued up inside here. And I'm just going to dry fit this. And then we'll take the spacer and push it up into the glue till we reach that mark and then pull that out really quickly. Okay, I'm going to push it all the way up so I can get my thrust ring back here. Okay, 
Okay. Now to glue this in, <clears throat> you can use a piece of scrap balsa or an applicator like this. And according to the instructions, this needs to go an inch and a half up. So I'm just going to use my ruler here and mark with my thumbnail where an inch and a half is. And then this is going to go up inside here. So now I'm just going to get some glue. Um, you don't want too heavy here because this is a small body tube or motor mount tube. All right, now I'm going to stick this in the middle, not touching the sides yet. And then once I hit my thumbnail, I'm just going to rotate that around to put in a film of glue. Okay, now I'm going to add my thrust ring here. And make sure you're in the aft end again. Put my thrust ring in, and then my spacer. I'm going to push that up until my line is flush. I'm going to pull it right back out again so that I don't accidentally glue it inside. And then we can see here. Within the motor mount, you can see glue that got pushed ahead there. That's what we want. Um, and I'm kind of squeezing the motor mount all around here to get good contact with the glue. All right, I'm just going to let that dry for a few minutes before we go on to the next. For the centering rings, the instructions shows gluing these on flush to each end. Okay, and again, I'm just dry fitting these. Okay, now personally, I like to move these up just a little bit more. And the reason for that is to give a better grip when I'm trying to pull the motor back out after launch. Okay, um, you can do the same thing here with the forward ring if you want. The other advantage to doing it this way is it allows me to put a fillet of glue around here on both edges. And that's just going to give us a stronger motor mount. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this now with the glue is I'm just going to put a ring of glue here around one end. Um, this is the forward end. Okay, and then I'm going to slide that on. Okay, and again, I like to put it just a little bit past the edge. Um, this is a little bit of the inside part of the ring that popped up there. Um, you can ignore that completely because this part of the motor mount is going to be hidden. Right, and now I'm just going to run glue around that edge. Okay, don't get it up there on the ring. Okay, and then back here, this is the aft end. Again, I'm just going to run a film of glue around that. And then put this piece on. And again, you can either make this flush. Um, and if you do that, when you put this into the rocket mo uh, body tube, the entire back end will be flush. It looks really cool. Uh, but if you want to give yourself a little more working room and a little more strength, go ahead and push that forward just a little bit again. And here, once more, I'm going to go ahead and run some glue around that. Okay, and I just want to make sure that I don't have any inside the tube. So if you do, just clean that out really quickly. Okay, and that's ready to go. We'll just let it dry for a few minutes, and then it can be put in the body tube. This is one of the places where we have another option. So this is my original motor mount here. Um, but let's say that you would like to have a motor mount clip to actually give good positive lock on the motor. So this is a mini engine clip and you can get these from Estes. You can also get them from a few other manufacturers. Um, or if you need to, if you have a standard size engine clip, you can simply bend it over um, further up and then cut off the excess which is actually how I made this one okay but it should fit that motor spacer just like that now I'm taking the tube that we marked for the original 
engine tube there, and I'm just going to place it beside my engine mount, okay, so that my line here is lined up with the aft end, and then up here at the forward end, I'm going to use that as a guide to make a slot right there, about three millimeters wide, or an eighth of an inch, okay, and then, then we're going to just simply push that in like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my glue here. Um, and I don't want a lot because I'm going to push this down and I don't want it getting all goobered up inside the tube below where my engine clip is. All right, the stuff I've got up here on the outside, you know, the excess at the top, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Right now I'll push that in, and now I can use my engine spacer to just push that in until it connects with the top of the engine hook. Okay, and then we can let that dry. While the engine block is drying with my engine hook, um, we're going to need to modify these two rings as well. So the one that will end up being the forward ring, you want to cut just a, a shallow slot that will be the width of the engine hook. And I'm just going to remove a small amount here, just a few layers of the paper. And this will give a little spot for the engine hook to pass through at the forward end. Just like that. Okay, don't worry about it. There's a little frayed paper there or something, that's all right. On the uh, aft one, we're going to cut this down a couple of millimeters. Okay. About three millimeters, or about an eighth of an inch in, in depth. And this will also allow the engine hook to pass, but this will allow us to, to pull it outward so that we can change the motor. So I'm just going to dry fit this on now. Okay, so that has got some travel now. Um, probably want a little bit more there. So I'll just take that off again. And just cut a little bit more out. Put that back on. Okay, so if this is right at the aft end, like the instructions show, you'll need a little bit more um, room on that slot. If you push this up about five millimeters or so, um, then you don't have to have as much cut out of it to get enough play there to allow you to change the engine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut that out a little tiny bit more. Okay, now I'm going to come back to my forward ring here, and instead of putting it just on here, and if you're wondering why there's another slot here, it's because I cut it in the wrong spot. It'll be covered up here. Okay, so here I'm going to take the forward ring, match the shallow slot, there we go, to the end of that. So this is just covering the forward end of the engine hook there. And then the other one 
will fit on like this at about five millimeters from the aft end and so it'll look like this when we get done. Now, why didn't Estes do this to begin with? Probably due to weight again. Okay, so um, by having the forward ring a little bit farther back and having the extra mass of this hook, which is only a gram and a half or so, that's still going to move the center of gravity farther back onto the rocket to the point where we might have to add some additional nose weight. Okay, and I'm prepared to do that if necessary. Uh, but do be aware if you're going to use this modification that uh, you may also have to add some more clay to the nose. Okay, now, one other thing we need to do here, optionally, is if you're going to use a Kevlar shock cord, um, it's typically wrapped around the motor mount. If you're just going to use the regular um, rubber cord that came with it, you don't need to do this next step. Okay, so this is 100 pound Kevlar, Kevlar line. Um, as you might tell from the uh, spool I've got here, um, this was originally intended for use with high performance kites. Uh, but the nice thing about it is it's incredibly strong for its weight. Uh, it's also very fire resistant. And so um, the rubber shock cords that typically come with SDs and other models, you know, after those have been launched, say, 7, 10, 12 times, um, the rubber in the shock cord becomes corroded and brittle, and eventually that shock cord breaks. That doesn't happen anywhere near as often with Kevlar. Now, Kevlar does have its own drawbacks, and we'll take a look at that here in just a moment um, after we get everything assembled. So the rule of thumb with Kevlar is to use at minimum three times the length of the rocket. So this rocket is just a quarter inch under a foot, so I'm just going to call it a foot. So I want three feet of this. And the reason for this rule is that Kevlar does not stretch. So it's depending upon the unaerodynamic aspect of the rocket when it comes apart at ejection to slow things down. Okay, now I'm just going to cut that. Okay, and now um, to keep the ends from fraying and make it easier to work with, uh, I'm just going to add a little touch of super glue to the ends, and that will wick into the Kevlar threads and keep them from fraying further. Okay, and then I'll just take a tissue here and wipe off the excess. Uh, if you want, you can also use some super glue accelerator or just some isopropyl alcohol here, which does the same thing. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a water knot, also called a fisherman's knot here, so that I have a loop. Okay. Um, and here I'm going to take my forward ring off, remember we have not glued this yet. Okay, I'm going to pass this through my loop to make a lasso here. And that lasso is going to go around my motor mount. And then the shock cord itself will pass up through that same notch that we just cut for the engine retainer. Okay, now you can also do this if you decide that you want to make the regular one here um, without the engine retainer. And you just do the same type of thing. You'll need to cut just a really shallow slot for the Kevlar to go through. Um, and you'll probably want to put this on a little bit further back, not much. Okay, but I'm going to bring this all the way back to where I had my engine retainer and then push it over the engine retainer again. Just like we had it before. Okay, now at this point um, you can glue this all the way around. Now, 
adding glue like this also increases the weight in the back of the rocket. Okay, so it's something you need to account for um, when you're checking this for stability. And then if you have any glue on the outside of the ring here, just wipe that down. Okay, I'm just going to adjust that just a bit and make sure it's where it needs to be. Okay, so this is the forward end of the motor mount tube, and this will pass up through the rocket. All right, and then down here on our other side, we are ready to go ahead and put on the aft ring. So here I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue around this. Right, let me get my aft ring here. I'm going to make sure I don't have glue on the engine clip. And I'm going to put this on so that the slot that I cut goes right over the clip. Again, I'm going to move that till I've got about half a centimeter or five millimeters there. Uh, and then the, the glue that gets pushed ahead there, um, you can simply smooth into a fillet with a fingertip. Okay, and now I'm going to let this dry. While the motor mount is drying, go ahead and cut out the fin marking guide here. You use scissors or use a hobby knife. Um, and you always want to check with these things and make sure there's nothing on the other side of the instructions that's important. Um, I already checked this and I knew it was just an illustration. Uh, or if you don't want to cut up your instructions, you can simply make a photocopy of this. piece of tape handy, either a piece of scotch tape or some masking tape. Just a small piece to keep this from coming apart. Okay, and we're going to wrap this around the aft end of the body tube. And the aft end is whichever end that you decide to call the aft end. Okay, so we're just going to wrap that around with about half a centimeter or so showing on the aft end. Okay, and we want to line up those two tick marks. And now I'm going to put my tape on here. Uh, and what I like to do is put it on so that I leave a little bit of the tape sticking out onto the motor, uh, onto the body tube here. And that'll keep this from rotating while we're doing our drawing. And if you want, you can do this on both sides. So you can just grab another little piece of tape here. All right, and then I'm going to take my pencil and put a little tick mark on either side of each of these guidelines. So four of these are fin lines. One of them is for the launch lug. I'm just going to put a little L down here so I remember that's a launch lug line. like that. Okay, now I'll just carefully remove the tape once more. And the guide. And now traditionally we use a uh, door frame to um, extend the lines up here. Uh, the ones for the fins don't have to go very far up. The one for the launch lug needs to go up about five inches or so. Now since it's really hard to video while trying to do this on a uh, door frame, I've got an Estes marking guide for this purpose. 
rocketry. This is actually one of the more useful rocketry jigs I've ever owned. Uh, and it's just a, a series of, of straight pieces here uh, at various heights so that it will fit the tube that you happen to be using. Okay, so I can bring this around. Try to get this where I can see it with the video. Okay, so here I just line up my tick marks along the side and connect from the front to the back and all the way to the aft end of the body tube. Okay, so that was a fin line. And we'll do the same for the other fin lines. All right, and then the launch lug line needs to be a little bit further up. So I'm going to draw it in and I'm going to extend that about halfway up the body tube here. Uh, you can extend it all the way up if you want to make sure. Okay, and I'll just put in the other fin lines here. And one more. Okay, so I have all those marked where they need to be. Now, after everything is marked, we need to come back to the launch lug line. And at three inches, Okay, and we're going to measure 3 inches or 7.6 centimeters for those who are metrically inclined. So I'm going to measure 7.6 at the aft end there, which means this end will be right there. And I'm just going to make a little crosshatch mark on the launch lug line, and that's where the aft end of the launch lug will be. Now, according to the instructions, they have us putting the fins on next. Um, which is fine. Personally, I prefer to put the motor mount in first, and they show that as the step after the fins. And the only reason I do that is in case um, you get some glue that grabs and suddenly slips, you're less likely to uh, end up um, damaging the fins back here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Do it this way. Um, and here's my standard motor mount. Okay. This is the forward end, and this is going to go in and then be flush like that. Now, if you strictly adhered to the instructions and made this flush with the, the engine ring, um, then this whole thing will be completely flush here at the bottom. Okay, which makes it look really good aesthetically. The reason I let it stick out just a little bit. Um, was so that it's easier to grab hold of the motor when you're changing them out. Uh, which in this case, um, I could either put it in until I'm flush with the centering ring or put it in until I'm flush with the motor mount. Okay, which is what I'm going to do in my build. Okay, so here they suggest putting um, a bead of glue at an inch and a half in. So here again, I'm going to use a cotton applicator. All right, so an inch and a half or 3.8 centimeters there. It doesn't have to be completely exact. Okay. Um, and like we did with the motor mount, we're going to take some glue here. And I'm going to use my thumb as a guide, stick that in, and put a layer all the way around that. All right, now what they suggest is also putting a layer around the aft end of your motor mount here. Uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'll show you here just as I go. So now I'm going to put this in, and you have to do this fairly quickly. All right, so I'm not touching that inside glue yet. Now I'm going to get some more glue 
right here. And I'll put that right around the inside edge of the body tube. And if I get some on the motor mount, it, it's no big deal there, um, other than the slight amount of weight it imparts. Okay, so now I push this up, and the forward ring goes into the forward glue, the aft ring goes into the aft glue, and I'm just going to pop this down flush, and bring it back, and that's all ready to go. Okay, now if I get this in focus here, um, there's a little bit of a gap in there. And to, so to fix that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a layer of glue around the inside and down into that crack. Okay, and then I'm just going to wipe off the excess. Let me use another applicator here to do that. You can also just use a tissue. Okay, and here I'm just checking to make sure it hasn't moved. Okay, but that's going to give us a really strong mount there. And I'm going to let this dry. 